Hello everybody, my name is David Pham and today I'm going to be teaching you guys about Sigma and product notation. Behold the capital letter S in the Greek alphabet. This is a very important symbol used in math to express a sum in an abbreviated way. So this is kind of an ideal uh, template of what the Sigma notation would fully look like. And essentially what this is in English is the sum of AI from I equals 1 to I equals N. Now let me give you a short rundown of how each individual piece in the sigma works. So to begin, A is just the semand. This is the quantity being added. With just a plain letter here, it doesn't really make much sense. Once we get into the examples, you'll, you'll definitely understand what this A represents. So this I over here, this is just the index of summation. People usually call it the dummy index, and it doesn't really have any special meaning behind it, but it must be written regardless so that we know where to start. So this number here is known as the lower limit of summation. This is the smallest value that our index will take on, and unless stated otherwise, this is always incremented by one. Now this n here is the upper limit of summation. This is the highest value that our dummy index will take on. For my computer science people out there, you can think of this sigma exactly like a for loop, except both bounds of summation are inclusive. So the first example is the sum of 2i plus 1 from i equals 0 to 4. Once again, this is just a sum end, so all we need to do is just sub in i for each of the dummy index values all the way up to the upper bound of summation. Let's expand. As you can see, we're just adding the same thing over and over again, except we're changing the value of i each time. We're incrementing it by 1, starting from 0 all the way to 4. After a bit of work, we can see that the final answer is 25. So example two is actually working backwards. They've given us the expanded sum, and now our job is to simplify it using sigma notation. So the first step in this problem is to look for a pattern. And we can see that every single number is squared. So that means that the sum end must be squared. So we can see that it starts at three and the base increments by one all the way to 100. So that must be the lower and upper bound of summation. So the sum end must be i squared. Now remember, I didn't have to pick i as the dummy index. I could have picked anything else, and it would have worked. If I turned it into a j, it would not affect the outcome of the answer. Let's talk about properties of the sigma. So the first one is if the sum end is actually additive itself, you can split up the sigma into two separate ones, so hopefully it eases out the work, as long as the lower bound and upper bound of summation are the same. So I've written out an example to illustrate this property, the summation of 8i plus 8 from i equals 1 to 10. You can split that apart by just making this the, the, sum, end of, uh, the sum of 8i, and just 8 added by itself 10 times, which is just 80. So you can kind of see how this would be easier sometimes. Next one. If you have something that you can factor out out of the sum end, we're going to call it c, you can actually just factor it out out of the whole summation itself. Again, here's another example. The same summation that we used earlier, we can see that we can factor out the 8 from the summation. We're just going to take it out. And now the summation is something much easier that you could do with really quickly. So let me talk to you guys about the importance of distinct index variables. So in this example, we have the summation of i divided by j from i equals 5 to 7. And here, it's almost the exact same thing, except we're using j as the dummy index. So why is this different? Well, in the first one, 
j is not the dummy index. So we can just consider as a completely normal variable. And once we do a bit of the work, we get that this is 18 over j. Now for this one, it's the complete contrary. j is the w index that we're going to be using, and i is the variable that we're going to use. So this, is, um, this actually changes the whole game. So see how this is completely different from this. And get that the answer is, according to my calculations, 107 out of 210j after finding, after finding the common denominator. So I did say that I was going to talk about product notation in this video too, but there actually isn't that much to talk about anymore because it's essentially the same as sigma notation. Except we use this symbol, which is the Greek letter uh, for P in our alphabet. And instead of um, using it for summations of list of terms, it's for multiplying. That's it. The property for product notation is almost the exact same as sigma. However, we just use multiplication instead of addition. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about before ending the video is empty sums and products. Now, somewhere out there, someone's going to give you the occasional oddball, an upper summation that is actually less than the lower index of summation. What do you do then? Well, I have some good news. They're just there to trick you, man. When used in really long equations, we want to make sure that if something doesn't seem right, we don't want it to mess up the rest of the entire equation. So in sigma notation, when the upper bound is less than the lower bound of summation, this whole thing is just zero. Because adding zero doesn't affect the equation. And for product, that's For product notation, however, multiplying by zero will, re will result in the entire equation being zero. So we're actually going to make the empty product result in a one, as multiplying in one doesn't alter the outcome of the equation. That does it for this video. I've left some questions for you guys to try out. Answers are in the comments. Don't cheat. Always try before you look at the answers. Um, Please let me know how I did in the comments section. If I, if I got anything wrong, let me know. And for, as always, if you need help, don't hesitate to contact me or just leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be sure to reply as soon as I can. Um, that was it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.